Hi, welcome to Black Ticulate, 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 a podcast series featuring UK young black professionals, where we find out how they do what they do, so you can too. Or not. After all, it is your life. <laughs> What I always do, I know a lot of people, like other podcasts you listen to, they get the host to actually introduce the guest and like, you know, try and give them a nice, brief, pithy biography. Right. But I'm always going to do the guest a disservice. Right. So I just always just flip the mic right. and say, listen, <laughs> tell you my, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> tell my listeners who don't have the pleasure yet of knowing who you are, who you are, you know, um, and we just sort of roll from there. We just have that conversation. Uh, well... My name is Babs Atakra. I'm originally from Ghana. Ah. Uh, been here for years and years. Um, but I'm a fashion designer. Um, amongst a plethora of other things that I do, try and juggle. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm self-employed. I'm an independent um, brand. Well, I'm trying to become an independent yeah. brand. Throw out the brand. Gingham Doll. <laughs> how, are spe- how are we spelling that? Because the greatest thing about audio is that, you know, people are on the move, on the go, right, so, so they can do multiple things. Yeah, so that's G-I-N-G-H-A-M-D-O-L-L. Gingham yeah. Doll. So gingamdoll.com. Yeah. Yeah. Right, then we're going to talk yeah, about your website situation. Got it. <laughs> I need to learn to promote myself then. I'm like, yeah. yeah, what's your brand called? I was like, oh yeah, I've got a brand, right? Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think the greatest thing and why I want you on Black Ticulate, because as you know, Black Ticulate really is all about black stories, positive actions, but I speak to black millennials right. um, from African, Africa, Caribbean diaspora and within the UK, just doing great things. I use the term go-getters. Right. But, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of people are like, well, I don't know, what the hell does go-getters mean? And it really truly is someone who does multiple things just trying to make not only ends meet, but, you know, thrive. Yeah, thrive. And also, Excel. for me, it's it's also a lot of enjoying what I do because, don't get me wrong, sometimes I, I have no days off because, like I explained to you earlier, I, I have three jobs mm. that Which I try job? and juggle. So, um, the one I do from Monday to Friday, I'm a dog walker and trainer. Amazing. Um, with my best friend. Um, it's his company, and we're talking an average of 20 dogs a day. No way. Yeah, so from 9 a.m., I get home about 2 p.m. I'm going to have to get you back on so we can talk about how you become a dog trainer. Oh, my God. Jesus. Okay, I, I was him, thinking I, about fashion. See, I, hey. I play with all the cute dogs. He does all the work, so don't get it twisted. <laughs> don't be calling me for no tips, because I'd be like, just pet it. It's cool. <laughs> Screw it, it's um, great. But it's not as glamorous as it sounds. There's a lot of, you know, dog crap that goes with it, you know. Yeah. But, um, Literally. Yeah, absolutely, literally. So that's what I do from Monday to Friday um, till about 2 p.m. I come home and I also work for a company called BD Sport. And they are, they're not a betting company, but we're like the middlemen. So my job is to staff four, five stadiums in London, football mm. stadiums. Right. Um, so I have a database of about 200 names of staff and I recruit and um, I just make sure I slot names and just make sure the stadium's always full. So it's, it's for home games, so whenever there's any home games. Is that like stewards? When you say staff, what? Well, kind, kind of, except my staff take bets in the stadium. Oh, so I some see. Of, some of oh, the concourses, gambling, huh? right, so some of the concourses, as you'd probably notice if you go to the football stadium, if you go into the corporate areas, you get some with clipboards walking around, right. mingling with customers, cracking jokes. Um, but the bottom line is they're just there to get the customers to fill some betting coupons and yeah. it's that kind of thing. But it's it's a massive operation when you're trying to juggle all that and, you know, try and make sure the stadium's are staffed because obviously it's no one's full-time job. Yeah. Everyone's doing Some people are lawyers. You'd be surprised. We've got all, we've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got people from uni doing it. You've got people that just need a bit of extra cash. Um, and it's, if you enjoy football, you know what, even if you don't enjoy football because... I, I can't lie, I don't, I don't support yeah. football. I don't watch it. Really? No! <laughs> and you've got access like that, and you don't no, even watch it. I don't watch we it. We need to be all. friends more. No, I can't tell you. It's, how many people ask me, oh, so who do you support? I'm like, Beckham. Beckham? Like, yes! <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I was like, Beckham all the way. <laughs> and they're like, oh, God, you're so lost. But um, no, it's, it's brilliant, actually. I don't, I never realized that people spend. The amount of money they spend, and also three hours before the game even kicks off, it's like the day started for a lot of people. Mm. They come, they they come to the bar, they they get like an a la carte meal. It's like a whole. Yeah, it's a day out. It's a day out. It's it's incredible. Yeah. If you you know if you've never been to a football stadium, but you know besides point, that's just another thing I do. So that and the dog walking takes a lot of my time. 
Right. But fashion is my heart. It's what I would love to do full time basis if I didn't have to like everyone else, I'm not I'm nothing special. Everyone else juggles loads of different things. If yeah. I didn't have to do that, fashion would be one thing that I would I would love to just do. I do have a I'm a bit kind of most people are like, why don't you just go get investment? But I think for myself, I'm not really good with asking for money. Okay. And I think it puts a lot of pressure on you when you go Okay. Say I need so this is investment for your fashion brand. My fashion, right. Okay, so, so that's why I'm doing it slowly. Yeah, organically. It, I'm doing it organically. It is, it, is, it is a very, very slow process. Very, very slow. Um, but if you've got the heart and if you enjoy what you're doing, you know, and every so often when you, when, you, when you get feedback from customers or people who've seen the quality of your stuff, it reminds you that, okay, you know what, I'm doing it's something right. Okay. Because, yeah, because as you can see, I, I work in my studio by myself. I don't get that interaction with people. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the only job that I get interaction with people is the football right. when I'm in the stadiums because I work in the stadiums as well. As well, okay. So that's why we've got you on about for me anyway because yeah. I have been keeping a close eye. I mean, you're dear friend, so I'm like, ah, she's actually now starting blowing up. She's starting <laughs> to blow up. I need to definitely get on black articulate. <laughs> but I feel like um, we almost got to go back a little before that's we go cool. forward yeah. and almost about the birth of it, the fruition, and why fashion. You know, um, so how do we begin this story of yours? Uh, how to begin? I mean, I think I've, I've always been interested. It's quite funny. I am not really interested in what I personally look like. Right, okay. Which is, I guess, it's really odd for most people. It's not like I don't care, but you know what? It could be a bit of both. If I'm being really honest, I have never experienced being extremely overweight. I've never experienced having you know, acne and all that kind of stuff, right, you know, yes. so that could By be... By the way, guys, her skin is flawless. Shut so, up, uh, shut up. I'll definitely but put a picture out no, there. <laughs> no, but sometimes you've got to kind of take a step back and realise that part of who you are or your character is based on what you had nothing to do with. Right. You know, like, sometimes I find it really odd when some people compliment me, go, oh, you're so pretty. I'm like, I don't, I'm not quite sure what you want me to say with that. Right. I'm right. always like, okay, thank God, thank my parents, but I haven't done anything to look like this. Okay. As a fashion designer, I find a lot of my colleagues or other fashion designers, it's all about they're, they're, they're selling themselves. And I think that's one of the bits that I find really hard to do. Right, I always, my friends always say to me, if you're going to an event, make sure you're wearing game door. You'd think it's one-on-one, -on -one, but I, I don't work like that. I don't, I don't right. think like that. So, I, I'm just comfortable. I just like to just throw in anything. Like, I don't really think twice, though. When I said to my dad that I, you know, wanted to do fashion, he was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like any cardi in Paris. He was like, he was like, it was more like he was just like. Well, how old were you at this age? This um, time. Well, funny enough, because I did my A levels in Kenya, an international school in Kenya, okay. um, because my dad's job, he's a diplomat, so we moved around a lot. Okay. And so that time we were in Kenya, and, and with my A levels, I realized that art was something that I really enjoyed to do. Right. Um, not necessarily painting it was just more being creative so it, actually from the age of 10 from my first boarding international school that i went to which was in togo um it, it, it was a boarding school um a British it's in between school. ghana and nigeria yeah. by the way guys it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of like beside benin and yeah that. exactly um but that was a really good experience but even from that age i was quite artistic in the sense of we used to do like little dances and I used to like to choreograph stuff. So I've always liked okay. to be part of, and I think in my heart, I've always felt like if I had the opportunity now in hindsight of taking dance as an actual career career or just as part of school, like in American systems, they do that. In right. British systems, you don't get that much. Okay. You get a lot of sports, but dance is always kind of like secondary kind of thing. Mm. Um, I would have enjoyed to do something like that. So I'm, I'm quite a creative person. So I think when I got into my A-levels and I was really homing in an art. My art teacher and I realized there was no fashion teaching per se in in the school. In the Kenyan but, International School. But we started it. I started it. Oh really? Yeah, so it was quite it was quite cool. We started like a modern cl class. A class of one. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a class of one. It was brilliant. Amazing. So um yeah, it, it was actually really good. So I did my A levels in, in fashion and um they they get um the British Council, fashion can the council had come down to Kenya to is it the yeah they come to the British Council and loads of universities come to promote their universities whether it's art or whatnot. Okay, I didn't and know that. yeah, it's they do it. I think it's every year. Is it something that's still going on? To be honest, I haven't been there for. They're years, like but, the British Council but, will go yes, into. But I, I think so. it's something that still goes on because that's how they sell the universities. You know, the boarding schools or international schools and all that kind of stuff. So they Great do time. go and 
and you kind of go around and you meet some of the lecturers and you get a, a grasp of an idea. And sometimes you get scholarships just from doing that. Really? Yeah, so that's how I then got my place in Kayat, which is where I studied in Kent. So that stands for Kent Institute of Art and Design. Um, it, is I it think, renowned? Is it like one of yeah, the most prestigious? Yeah, they, because they've got, they've got um, campuses and they've got like a campus in Maidstone and Canterbury. Mine was in Rochester, so right. it was the fashion um, hub. Uh, hub uh, fashion really? Campus. Okay. Um, but obviously you've got LCF and St. Martin's. Yeah, like St. Martin's. Yeah. Martin's. For me, being in the heart of London, I wouldn't have learned anything. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, no, no, I know, I know so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get distracted what? so easily. Oh, I see. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. The distraction. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I get distracted so easily. So being somewhere out of London, like in Kent, was just ideal for me. Okay. Um, so that's where I started. So what I... What was the course? It uh, was... I, I did just a plain BA fashion design okay. course. Um, but funny enough, when I do get approached by young people who want to do fashion, when they do ask me what to do, I don't tend to recommend them to do... A three-year BA course. Okay, why is that? Because it doesn't really mean anything. Right, so the paper doesn't it really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Per, from my personal yeah, experience, no, and from all the experience from my peers and those that graduated with me, those that graduated with first, in fact, I think there's probably three people I know from my whole uni that are doing stuff still linked with it, because it's a hard industry. Yeah. It's a hard industry, and just because you come out with the first really doesn't mean much. Yeah. Um, just means you're good at knowing how to right, get Right, yeah, exactly. Um, for me, what I did after that was a natural progression. You kind of do an internship with, with a company, right. with a fashion label or whatever. I did with Granny Struck. Granny Struck? Gran, Granny Struck. Um, G-H-A-R-A-N-I, I believe. Okay, Granny I'll Struck. put this on the show notes, um, guys. And amazing British um, fashion label. I'm not sure if they're still... Operating. If they're still operating, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not I'm not 100% sure of that, but um, very, very great experience to work with. They, they do a lot of draping. So, so I worked with them for a couple of months. Um, but then I just realised, uh, doing the whole internship thing and, and speaking to people who'd been doing it, for, some people had been doing it for two years. For two years? An and internship? You don't, you don't really get paid for it. No way. <laughs> you don't get paid for it. You know, it's some, it depends. Every company is different. So, how, is that almost a class thing then, that those who can afford to do it for two years without yeah, having course, paid? Yeah, of course. Because... Some companies might pay for your lunch. Right. Or some travel. companies might pay for your travel. Right. Some might pay for both. Um, but pay, pay, you don't really get. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's all about getting the experience, right. which I totally get. But I remember... Um, and you have to, out of interest, regarding internships, because you said you don't tell those who come yeah. to you who are younger and yeah. saying, oh, how do I get into it? You say, not necessarily for you anyway, yeah, I mean, I, to I, go I, for a degree, but right. go straight into an internship. With not experience. necessarily. Oh, what okay. I do ask them to do is there's another, because I went through UCAS. So ah. UCAS is the university system, yeah, yeah. To, if you, those who are not aware, for doing BA courses, BTEC, and all that jazz. Um, after that, a year after that, I realized that I really didn't know how to pattern cut properly because with big universities, there are people that help you. Oh. I even have friends today that have just finished from St. Martin's or LCF, whatever. And they're like, oh, God, I actually don't remember how to pattern cut. Because you've got a lot of technical help. Right. And so, you know, like, for instance, if you're doing, I don't know, a BA course and your final collection has to be eight pieces, you only have to make, well, at least before, you only had to make, make two of those pieces. The rest, you can pay someone to make it. Really? So it's sometimes it's, you can skim through the whole course and come at the other end of it and realize, oh, you actually don't know the hands on. Know yeah. the hands on. Or, you know, and I mean, it depends on your character. For me, it, it didn't even occur to me that I didn't know the hands-on and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and my pattern cutting wasn't wasn't the best. And I was like, oh my gosh, I actually <laughs> didn't know where I was coming or going, you know. Yeah. But then I found courses, short courses from Floodlight. I don't Floodlight. know if you heard of Floodlight. No, I haven't. Um, I'm sure they're still going on. And okay. they, they... Once again, guys, everything we do mention yeah, in here, I'm going to put flood, on the website. Flood, yeah, take a look and see if they're still operating. But I'm sure they are. Um, Floodlight... I don't even know who introduced me to Floodlight, to be honest with you. I think I, 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 think I went to, because I've never lived in Ghana, but I needed a break. So I think I went to Ghana and I did an internship with a, a well-known fashion designer called Kofi Ansa. Oh, okay. He died a couple of years yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And he was my dad's friend and my dad managed to get me in there and I did, I did some work with him. And I think he's the one that told me, you know, you should go back and then you should, you should okay. try Floodlight, do like a short course pattern cutting and all that kind of stuff. And... That's where I went to um, London Centre for Fashion Studies. London Centre for yeah, Fashion Studies. Okay. At the time, it was based in Angel. 
It's still there because when I passed it, it's still there. But I think the name's changed. And I'm not sure if the whole course setup has, has changed. But it was brilliant. It's just a one-year course. Right. And it, it crams, but it's brilliant. It crams everything. So, like, you know, like, for those who are aware of how it works, the, the first term, you're concentrating on skirts and blouses. So anything to do with skirts and blouses, making, cutting, manipulating, you've got that. Then the second term, it's maybe tailoring. Right. So you... It, and I, I noticed a lot of the students were from, graduated from, like, university. Oh, right. From LCF, from, from everywhere. But can you get on that without having yeah, you to... Yeah, you can get straight. on it straight, oh, okay. yeah. Because some, some people, they're from all, all... Some people got in straight. Um, and for me, I learned the most there. Maybe, you know what, that's what I'm saying, that's just my experience, because it could have been that, for me, I was just more mature to take in the information. Right. Because it's not saying that the BA courses don't give you the information, but I think you also have to be mature enough to realize that, okay, I need to grasp as much information as I can get. Because when I get out, it depending on what you want to do. Because most people have this fantasy of, I want to get out and I want to work for Chanel. Right. It, it does not work like that. No. It, it, I mean, it's, it's out of a thousand students, you're talking about like one. There's yeah. just that one person that... And if that, and that's normally the boss's Right, yeah. Sometimes, and, yeah. It's, sometimes it's a link. Sometimes Nepotism. it's being at the right place. You know, a lot of the time... If you're good at networking, that also comes in your favor as well, like going to a lot of events and just talking to everyone and anyone, which I am awful at. Okay. And like, I just never do. I just, I just can't, like, I, yeah, it just scares me to, like, really? <laughs> it scares the me. I can't take it. Oh. But if you have that, that's why my dad was like, you don't have that, you don't have that fire. You don't have, because fashion is, is a cutthroat business. Yeah, it's, it is, right? It's very, you know, it's very, it's very hard. You, you really have to sell yourself at every opportunity you get. Right. Um, and that was one of the things my dad wasn't saying that I wasn't talented, but he was just like, you don't have that character in you. You're too nice to be in this kind of industry. And, and I found it to be true because I go to events and I will sit back and it's only when someone I'm with goes, oh, no, she designs as well. And then someone will come, oh, so what do you do? And then I, I might start like slowly talking about it. Right. And they'll see my stuff like, oh, my God, it's really good. And then I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that's interesting. So yeah. you're saying if you want to... Pursue the fashion route now. Obviously, there's several sort of oh, disciplines, so many different, yeah. right? But if you wanted to do what you are doing, which is obviously you're creating your own brand and you're creating your own seasons and your yeah. own pieces, or if you want I mean, to work you, for yeah. another house, networking is, is it's, key. It's important. You've got to have yeah, that personality. Is key, yeah. 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 So, it is key because you 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 don't have to be louder than life, but you you kind of have to stand out, hmm. which is why. Some people take the standing out to be, let me dress as crazy as possible, because that in itself... Will get is, people will get drawn people to you. It's like peacocking. You. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but you've got, you've got to be able to stand out. You've got to be able to be like, okay, you know what, let me just go around and speak to people in the stream. What do you do? I'm a designer. I'd love to... You know, you've got to have that kind of thing about you. I don't, so I started making my own brand. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so let's so, talk about that then. So what's, what's the steps, almost, to starting... Your own brand. I mean, it's, I mean it's, what was that? A, yeah, what was that? I guess catalyst and trigger for you to be like, forget it. I'm not gonna work for Chanel. Yeah, I, I mean, start I think, I think, getting him doll. Yeah, I, I think for me, it was just, if I'm being honest, it was Please. probably a lack of confidence as well. Because okay. I just thought I am not that one percent or one out of a thousand yeah. who can get into Chanel. Like I never pushed myself that much. And when I tried the internship thing, it, it was it was fun. You know, there were aspects of it that were quite interesting um to say the least but i just didn't see it taking me anywhere that i really felt like i wanted to go so i started doing stuff on the side so would make stuff for friends or and i was i was blessed to be in a company of people that i knew who were on tv or, or that kind of stuff so i'd make a few things for this person because they've got this event or a few things for this person blah blah, blah. so i started doing that but in doing that when you start um working for or when you start making stuff for certain celebs, they don't expect payment. They don't no. expect to have to pay you. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. Because the whole deal is they're wearing your garments. So they'll give you press right. for but one of their But then sometimes words. you don't get that press. So you realise you've actually just worked for nothing. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's, it's one of those kind of things. And I just thought, this is definitely not bringing me any money. Yeah. It's also not really exciting me because a lot of them have a preconceived idea of what they want that outfit to be. So it's not like they're coming to so you going... So it's not your brand. They're right. almost commissioning you for free. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's... So, okay, I'm quite curious. Artistically, I, I didn't... I mean, I could have 
carried on with it, but I think I started Gingham Doll because I wanted to be able to make stuff that was still keeping to the quality that I do make stuff in. I source all my fabrics in the UK. Okay. Um, very few do I buy online. Um, and even if I do, it's UK companies. Right, okay. Um, some, every so often there's certain things you can't find here and then I might find in an American company um, that I might try, but 99% of the time it is it is basic. I like to be able to feel what I'm buying. Right, yeah. Um, so I, I, I still get the best that I can get. I still try and give the best quality that I can, that I can give. But I think with Gingham Doll, it was more to do stuff a bit more ready to wear, affordable. And for... more about what you want to do as opposed right, to the and, and more about, so, yes, like what I want. Hey guys, before we return to the episode, I just wanted to say I appreciate you listening. And if you'd like to get involved, then please visit www.blacticulate.com for more information. Now let's get back to the episode. Tell me the story then about your first, I guess, ever paid gig. Which almost, I guess, uh, from a psychological perspective, that then make you feel, I, I think, and please correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, where it's like, yeah, I am a professional. Yeah, this is my brand. Yeah, this is... I don't think I ever felt... You still... I mean, I mean now, now? Now, now doing Gingham Doll, um, when, I, when I started with Gingham Doll, the first thing that I did was start a shop on Etsy. Okay, Etsy. Um, Etsy, E-T-S-Y. Yeah. It's brilliant if you're creative and you've got things... It's... I always describe it as the American version of ASOS. The American version of ASOS. Right, okay. but then they give you a bit more flexibility if you're posting stuff. Mm. Um, it can, it still. I think I I tried the ASOS marketplace and it didn't work for me. Right. Okay. Um, it was a bit too pricey. They, I find. As so far as how much they get off you, commissions well, or. Well, the, there is the commission as well, but there's a just there's just a lot of like back and forth of them. You know, like they agree on a picture and then they'll say, oh no no no, the picture is too is too worked on. They want it to really? be more street image. Oh no, no, that's too professional. It was just this whole back and forth, and it was just it was just really odd. And also, they do take quite a hefty amount. I, I felt personally, but I also felt that when you're at ASOS Marketplace, I think when it first started, it was about boutiques, and then there was another link that you could click for vintage stuff. But right. now it's all just mixed in one. So you never, unless you go in there and search Gingham Doll, I won't just pop up. Right, gotcha. And so I was just hidden. It was just it was to me just absolutely pointless unless you've got like thousands of clothes on there then somehow you come up but I just found I was just lost in the system because there's so many people posting mm. whether it's their second hand stuff it was all on the same platform or brand new stuff that they're trying to sell or designers like myself um, I, I just didn't find that it was working for me but with Etsy it, I just find it so much easier that's just my personal experience and to be honest I haven't um, Etsy over like another marketplace like eBay on eBay I find there's tons of companies from China and there. So I wouldn't and also for me personally, my experience with eBay is I go to look for bargains. Gingham Doll is a brand on its own. It's so a premium. I, right. So I would Is that where you position yourself? Gingham? Well yes, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put myself on eBay and try and compete with people trying to sell two euros for fifteen pounds. No. I get fabric. I get, you know, the best deal I can get sometimes, you know, like fifteen pounds for a meter for fabric. So that already is just the cost of my fabric like do you know what yeah, I mean? it's, it's a totally different platform and I, I wouldn't on a personal note put gingham doll maybe if i was doing sales if i was like trying to get rid of clarence stock right i, I would think Possibly of ebay but that's eBay. my experience with ebay because i used to be really addicted to ebay mm-hmm. in terms of shopping on there right so i used to go for the bargain so i can't see myself putting things no i get that i get that know. so instead you went for etsy and so this, I went for is, etsy. is this where you first sell yeah, I think, I think, yeah. Um, what, so you already had a collection, is that correct? No, no, or... I, I didn't. So with Etsy, I just started making, I had, I had ideas, I knew exactly what I wanted, and I wanted to find, like, prints, and I thought, I spoke to a friend of mine who does marketing, and he's like, look, what you need to do is you need to go right back, because everything I was, I was designing was quite elaborate, and in terms of how long it takes to make it was quite long, in terms of the cost that it should, it should cost someone, was quite high as well. And he was like, no, you need to stop doing like basic stuff. Yeah. Get known for doing something really, really, really simple. Right. Um, so I started with body contrasts. Okay. Because once I'd done the template and the, and, and the pattern for it, then the same pattern, as long as the fabric had the same properties... It would work. It would work. And, and it, also, it was also easier in terms of sizes. So like, Is that a latex? Or almost well, looks like just, latex? Well, body con just basically means figure hugging. Right. And like a stretch dress. body con, body body con, so body conscious. Okay, is ah, I remember. But yeah, that. so body body con, it just means it's it's just nice and and it's tight and it tends to be like a jersey fabric, 
a stretch, some yeah. sort of um, like jegging. Yeah, some form of stretch fabric. So that is easy when you're just trying to just get numbers out there. Right. So I started with that, and and is there on, specific like pattern for that, or is it almost standardized? Um, I, I just make my own pattern. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sure you can buy patterns. Yeah. I'm sure you can. Um. Sorry, I'm jumping in. I'm actually no, no, really that's, excited. No, that's I'm really cool. excited. That's cool. really no, excited. no, no. I'm sure you can buy your own, you can buy patterns. I'm sure there are, but I I, ma I make my own patterns. So it took me, especially not knowing how to work with um, stretch fabrics for a while. So it took me a while to get used to it and and blah blah blah. But once I got it, that's kind of what I started with. And then I got approached by um, a girl called Alexander Houston, who is now quite a good friend of mine. Um, she started um, the movement Wasted Chic. Wasted chic. Yeah. Oh. So she started these pop up events. So she found you on Etsy. On Etsy. And was like, Oh, I'm doing this pop up event in Shoreditch and it would be really good if you could come take part. And I was like, Well, that sounds lovely, but I don't actually have a collection. At that time, I think I had, I'd, I'd, I made like one of everything and I probably had maybe 10 things in there, you know, exactly. Right. And I was like, This is like one of my jobs, like I, I don't do this all the time and I, I don't have a full collection, when is it? And I think it was like, a, it was less than two months, I think, yeah, almost a month and a bit. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. Amazing. So in a month, I managed to make 40 pieces. 40. Like I, I did not sleep, I did not sleep. Because if you're doing something like a pop-up shop, you've got to make small, medium, large. Yeah, the size range. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm always grateful for her because that kind of got me out there in sort of in my own little bubble and you know, getting out to doing these pop-up events is when I started actually meeting my customers, mm. which is different from just doing it and then someone buying it online and get, give me really good feedback, but you still don't get that kind of personal touch. So yeah. it was quite nice to, to do that. And it was it was brilliant. It was, I mean... Uh, are there, like, are there places where, I guess, my from my listeners' perspective, that they can type on maybe Google or something to see how they can get involved in pop-up events similar? Yeah, I mean, I think pop-up events are quite hard to get awareness of before they happen. Right, thank you. Um, Etsy was a good platform because I have been contacted through Etsy for different things. Oh, whether it's for a photo shoot or for if someone's doing a blog or that kind of stuff. I think a lot of people, because Etsy, you get a lot of fresh new designers, so they go on there just to kind of like check it out, check it yeah. out and contact people that way. Okay. But um, I mean, Wasted Chic is... It's a really good one, you know, if you're trying to get out there in terms of a pop-up shop and just get your stuff out there for people. It's oh. quite good when it's, it's um, she does it in uh, McQueen's in Shoreditch. But it, it's actually such a nice environment because it's in the bar. It's not like in a marketplace when you're indoors. It's quite cool. And it's just, there's about 30 designers or 30 different stalls. And is it the people who attend there, are they like wholesalers and buyers or no, are they actual customers customers oh, interesting. actual customers but it's up to you as a designer if you're going to um sell stuff there it's up to you to push and promote as much as possible hmm. um and not count on people just turning up because they will turn up because it's not it's not on a high street yeah, it's you off know? The beat, in fact. right it's off the beat in fact and it's something that happens once every like three months right so you as the person who's trying to sell stuff you have to promote Okay. You have to promote whether it's to if you know any bloggers and say oh, I'd love to invite you to this and and that's the problem. A lot of people just don't want to do that work. Right. When it comes to you know it'll be all well and good me just sitting here just making my stuff and blah blah blah. But a lot of people don't because that it takes a lot of time just to sit there posting stuff on Instagram, trying to post stuff on Twitter, trying to invite people because you know out of a hundred people you invite, ten might show up. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of work and yeah, it true. does take. A lot of time but it's 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 worth it if you do it properly it's rewarding so it is rewarding so i mean i've sort of got your i guess your journey which is great and guys i think you can agree with me to understand why i've got babs articulate because <laughs> she's phenomenal she's amazing Thank you. and i say that to all my guests because all my guests are <laughs> so i see that you you're quite um academic insofar as your your profession fashion you really did study it you even did this sort of intensive one-year course yeah, right yeah. and then from that when you decided or you believed for one of a better word you yeah. weren't as confident to go into these big bastions of the fashion right, industry yeah. you thought okay i'll start my own i'll start my right? own and just and then the first thing you did then was okay let's strip it down and try and ensure i get the i guess the minimum viable product right right exactly that one piece which you know regardless of the fabric so long as it sort of does itself yeah that pattern can go yeah. for seasons and seasons and then you put that 
I thought, let me just go back and do that because before then, I had actually started the brand before Gingham Doll. Okay. Called Oshie Couture. Oshie. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, because it's funny because um, that's my nickname from... I'm, we're not Nigerian, but that, that's my nickname. Yeah. Like, my dad, my brother calls me Osh. Okay. And my, brother calls, and my dad calls me Oshie. So it's like... <laughs> right. It's like a nickname from, like, years on. So That's interesting said, in itself as well because in a similar way, like, with Black Ticulate, let's not be around the bush. Yeah. People know the audience and right, the, the niche, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you were to have a brand called Oshie, yeah, you are so already pigeonholing yourself. Myself, yeah. And that, I wanted to, to reflect my family, um, but my last name is a bit long and I just thought that doesn't have that kind of catch to it, zing, zing to it. So yeah, I, di- I did, with Oshie Couture, it was more beading and hand beading and wow, wow. and um, using silks and it was, it was a lot of fun, but that's when I realised, okay, you know what? The prices that you charge for stuff like that not the average joke cannot afford yeah, it for sure which is why i pulled back and, and did and did gingham doll now with gingham doll the brand and the name in itself yeah. where did that come from right so my whole from as early as i can remember my idea of a sexy woman has always been one with a bit a bit of meat on her right and i guess maybe that stems from an african background it's kind of what you see and it's what's attractive the whole androgynous look never really worked for me. I never really got it. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's always been, and you know, when I was young, I was just up and down like a rake. I was like <laughs> a toothpick. <laughs> so I, I remember I used to be really self conscious. I was like, where are my hips? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where's the meat? You know, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um, so I think just in the back of my mind, I've always loved the 50s. I've always loved Marilyn Monroe. And what I take from her is, she wasn't a small woman, but for me, she was the first time being curvy and sexy was almost acceptable mm. because you had so many different trends before and after her, you know, but I, th- I, th- I think I've always loved the ethos behind the 50s, right? right? The, the feeling, the mood, um, the sexiness about the glamour of the 50s. Now, gingham is, do you know what gingham fabric is? So, um, it's isn't it like the picnic stuff? Yes, it's yeah. it's almost like what even even like back home, like for school uniforms and stuff, yeah. like checked green and white yeah, yeah, or pink yeah. and white. But also, if you look at pinup dolls, it's what they used to use for the pinup dolls. So, I took the name gingham from the fabric that I that I related I to use, the pinup yeah. dolls, and obviously dolls coming from the pinup dolls and us, us being dolls and yeah. yeah. But dolls in itself is quite a fifties yeah. lexicon yeah. slang. Yeah, so I I just kind of like. Okay, no, I see that, I see that. That's where the name comes from. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like, God, I mean, any resources, any uh, sort of to check out? To do? Yeah, because w- one thing I would say, because being in the fashion industry, you will find, and don't be shocked by this, people are not that willing to give you insights or not necessarily help, okay. but their sources of where they get their stuff. Fine. I remember I, I, I helped a friend who was a stylist for, I think it was Vogue, and we were help. We were, I was just in the background, just doing nothing. And she was styling this model, ready to go on. And the outfit the model was wearing had these like buttons, really simple, like vintage buttons. And my friend B was like, "Oh, those buttons are really nice." And she said to the designer, "Oh, where are these buttons from?" She's like, oh, "I can't tell you." Really? Yeah, I kid you not. But that, in a nutshell, it's is the fashion good. industry. Oh God. I'm sorry to say that is. It. If you find there are amazing people out there who are willing to share their expertise and whatever, but. If you go with that mentality, then you'll never be disappointed and you'll never be disheartened because it is it is a cutthroat cut throat industry. Mm. You have to, you're too scared to kind of give out, oh, I've got this. I, I tell people all the time, my favorite place is Crescent Trading. Crescent Trading? Yeah, Crescent Trading, um, run by two most amazing, um, <laughs> um, Philip and, and Martin, um, Jewish men in um, Brick Lane. Okay. Um, they're, they're so cool because Brick Lane... Back in the days, used to be full of like factories and fabric shops and right. warehouses and that kind of stuff. And now it's obviously just all Indian restaurants. Indian restaurants, and, yeah, for sure. And because the way it is now, it's cheaper to get stuff made in China and elsewhere, and you know, as it is. So, but they're the only ones, as far as I am aware, on Brick Lane that's still there. Still um, it's on Quaker Street. Okay. Quaker Street. Um, and and they're fabulous. They're really good with students. They sponsored my first um, brand, Osha Couture. So the first. Um, catwalk show I did and I went to them I was like oh this is what I want to do um, da, da, da. and they were like yep just take whatever you need really? so you, and you can go and you oh, can amazing. get the, yes. the good thing about that um, store is it's, it's, it's like a warehouse it's not a store it's a warehouse 
So um, you get massive designers going in. You get students going. They're very good with students. Um, so if you go in and, for instance, if you go to the West End, like Berwick Street, which is well known for fabrics, silk or even better, wool would be 40, 50 pounds a meter. If you go to Quaker Street, you can get that same exact wool mix, whatever it is, for like 12 pounds or 10 pounds oh, or, or 20 pounds a meter. Like it's, it's that much cheaper. Okay. But because it's a warehouse, I think what they do is they get um, remnants and leftover stock from a lot of the mills. So you can't go there and ask. If you go there and there's this, it might run out. So you need to just kind of get what, what, you, what get. you can get. Yeah. But it's, it's worth going. Okay. It is, I'm, I'm always pushing people there. It is absolutely worth going. Brilliant. Crescent trading. Well, you hear that, guys? You see, yep, you've got to go, you've got to go. Uh, fashion people that won't tell her secrets. <laughs> no, art is an expression. No one's right and no one's wrong. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's really it's not shame, that big a deal, shame. is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. But yeah, Crescent Trading, you've got to check it out. They're brilliant. All right, brilliant. They're fabulous. So challenges, like, you know, in starting up, what was the, what are the things that you've learned to tell my audience, my listeners? The challenge is money. Okay, so finances. Finance, um, I'm not... Is it because of fabric or what, what does money play? Why is well, money important? Well, fa yeah, fabric is, is key. I mean, bear in mind, I don't do anything with factories. Um, I, don't, I, don't, um, I don't have people making stuff for me, you know, in, in factories or in studios or, or whatnot. So everything I do is hands-on. Yeah. So it becomes a bit more pricier. Right. But fabric is, for me, it is key. And, and also just having that business mind of... You know, if you're gonna buy this amount of fabric, make sure you know you're gonna make this money back. I don't have that. Right, the other time. I, I, I'm just an artist. I kind of just get into the fabric store and I'm like, oh my god, I love this fabric. I'm gonna die. No, I swear to God, that's the way too. <laughs> and it's not the best way to do it. I wouldn't say follow my lead at all. Right. If you have any bit, bit of business, was it was acumen. Acumen, that's the one. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I make up my own words, so I have, sometimes I have to make sure it's not a word that I make. Oh, I, I do, trust me. I just make up words because I just, I just think it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if, if, if you've got um, some business acumen, mm -hmm. right, got it right. Um, Nailed it. Then you, you're on the right track. I, on the other hand, don't. So what business acumen do they need? Just the simples of demand and supply. Right. Right? So, you know, I go into the fabric store and because... I've started doing a lot of stuff with like pop-up shops or events where you've got to take a whole lot of pieces. I tend to go in and I can never just buy a meter or two meters of something. I've got to think long term. Right. Okay. So that's money. So I, I go in there, even if I manage to get the fabric, if it's like a nice, um, like a felt a wool or a wool mix and I manage to get it to from 25 pounds a meter to 18 pounds a meter, um, I, I still have to buy at least 10 meters of it. Wow. Because there's a whole thing of it might not be there when you need more stock. When you want more. So I, I think I'm, I'm not doing it the right way. What I should have done, you know, in hindsight, was probably just get enough for my sample. Um, so I, I would advise don't go crazy in the fabric stores. If, if you're doing, even if it's for a pop-up shop, what I should have done um, for a pop-up shop is do my designs, but just do one V style and then say order on request kind of thing. Right, but I right guess right. you just kind of want the money there and then you want people to be able to try in different sizes. So I was trying to provide everything that somebody who's got better means and connections than I should have done. Like I, I shouldn't, I don't think I should have done it that way. The way I would advise someone is just be aware that I, I call it like fabric porn. I, I, I get in <laughs> the fabric stores and I just don't think of anything else. I'm just thinking of, oh my God, I can make this with it, I make that with it. But you've got to hold the purse strings quite high. You've, you've got to be quite clever with what you're doing. Okay. And, you know, step back a bit and, and budget what you think you can spend on that piece. And if it means just doing one as a sample and taking pictures and then getting a bit of momentum from that, that's probably the best way to do it. Okay. Um, but everyone, like you said, has their own... Their own find their own yeah, path, their own right. Path, right. I mean, like, I wouldn't say do not do a three-year course because that sometimes, that grounding and just university life it's it's great you know it's, it's a good experience but i just don't think it's the it's the be all and the end of everything like for instance if i need to refresh myself at anything i do i just go on youtube there's so many tutorials yeah there are no yeah. there's so many tutorials right. so if you do like a short course 
um, whether it's from Floodlight or wherever you get it, you can you can still pick up other stuff on YouTube. So in this day and age, finance is is really hard. So not everyone can afford to spend. Do a course. Do a, course, do a three year course. You know, at, at uni. So sometimes just being a bit clever, go on YouTube. There's so many professionals on YouTube that are offering free videos. It's incredible. Mm. To anything, even I teach myself to do Photoshop because I can afford someone else to Photoshop my pictures or whatever. Yeah. So one, once again, YouTube tutorials, you sit there, you've got your Adobe, you've downloaded it and you're just doing it step by step. Yeah. You've just got to be focused on whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's it's not something that is going to happen overnight. So the question now I'm also going to ask about the challenges you face. Okay, so we know it's finance, money, right? And yeah. just being really quite... Um, I mean, I guess unless you get an investment it, or whatever, but... Unless you get that, yeah. if you wanted to go down that path. Yeah. But also, you being not a unicorn necessarily, and I say unicorn because yeah. you're a black female. Right, and which right. I, I never really think of, but that is a very, very important... It's very important um, part of this whole thing because I have been told, and, you know, by other colleagues, oh, my God, you know, if you were blah, blah, you could have been there. But I, I don't like to think like that mm. because I feel like... I'm limiting myself even before I've started. Oh, 100%. I'm you know with what you. I'm saying? I, so I, I never really think, oh, I'm a black female. If I wasn't, I could get... I think a lot of it stems with me. If I, I think if I was hungrier or if I was a bit more feisty, uh, you know, the, the industry, is, is, it's, quite a, it's quite a tough industry. You, you've got to be able to... You've just got to be able to sell yourself at every turn. Right. You know, at every turn... You know, make sure you're visible all the time. Go to all these, like, events, pop-up things, have business cards run. You kind of have to be fearless. Yeah. And I, I think, if I'm being 100% honest, it hasn't been because I'm a black female. I'm sure that has had a massive part to play in it. But it's because I, and a lot of times I haven't been as fearless as I should be. You know, there's you a lot of times... you yourself. Right, I've limited myself. I, I know I do. You know, there's a lot of times in my head... I've been saying this for a year. I really want to get, like a little bit in top shop just to be able to put so and I know my stuff would do amazing in there and I keep saying oh yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna try and figure out how to get there and I still never have I think it's just the fear of <laughs> trying to do that okay I'm gonna pause you for a second anyone who's listening who can get Babs into <laughs> top shop I'm obviously gonna put how we can reach her she's obviously gonna put that at the end as we do with all my guests but that's something to note so that's one of the yeah, goals yeah I, I need okay. to stop stopping myself if I'm honest, that's my character. I, I do, I do, yeah, I, I, I do stop myself. Um, you know, there's loads of times I'm like, I should do this. It's like, shoulda, coulda, woulda. It just doesn't really, mm. you know. Okay, so you are on the road to success for sure. How long has been, Gingham Doll's been operating? Uh, Gingham Doll, I started in 2012. 2012, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I started in 2012. So four years running. Yeah, God, it's, been, it's been four years? Yeah. Good God, I can't even count, yes. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's round up. I'm going to, again, throw it back to you insofar as advising my listeners to sort of start off in the footsteps that you have. Because you're four years deep. Yeah. I, I you th- do have a lot of learnings. And like I said, we're definitely going to get you back. Um, no, for sure. I, th- I think the main thing with anything you do, whether it's fashion or dance or it doesn't even have to be, have to be art, but you're going to get times where you feel like, oh, that's not working for you. And just don't be scared to just change it up and try something else. When you go into, you know, when you're young and you're like, I want to be a fashion designer, the first thing that you think of is, I want to work for a big house. But there's so many other facets to fashion, you know. Don't limit yourself to, I want to be the next world's biggest designer. And I'm, I'm say, I'm not, and I'm not saying don't try and do that as well. But you also have to be realistic with yourself and just don't limit, don't pigeonhole yourself into one bit. Because there's a lot of people who wanted to get into fashion but then started doing styling instead right because you're still in the industry you're still meeting people you're still networking and then from building with well, nowadays with instagram followers or whatever kind of followers then they've started doing their brand There's, it's never too late to be a designer it's also never too late to go to uni if you're in your 40s and you decided you know what i'll, I'll give this a shot it's never too late to do that as well so i think my, my main thing for people um well if you're a to do fashion is one it, it is tough so i'm not gonna glamorize it and i'm not gonna romanticize it for you there are aspects of that but it's a lot of hard work mm. and if it's something that's passionate for you in terms of art even if it's something that you do on the side like i do um i wish i could do this all the time but i, I really don't get a chance to do this as often as i should anyway mm. by the time i'm done with everything else i'm knackered 
And then I would lie, there are some times where I lose motivation. Like, I will not touch a sewing machine for like a month. Oh, really? Yeah, like, um, I think after the Christmas period, I just got in a bit of a lull and I just, I just did, I could not re motivate myself. Um, and in the beginning, I was really kind of like, it was affecting me. And then I thought, no, 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 I'm just going to go with the flow. Don't, you know, don't get overworked with everyone's got their own path. Yeah. And you've just sometimes got to take a deep breath and just step back. You know, I've always, I've always going to have the, the passion for fashion. But sometimes, I, I think for me, I felt like I wasn't going the right direction. I was like, okay, I'm working really, really hard. But I haven't really tackled the marketing side of it. So I'm mm -hmm. making all these pieces. No one can see them. Right. After a while, you just get a bit tired. You're like, I'm not quite sure which way to take it. So I kind of stepped a bit back. But I've got my mojo back, as I like to call it. Nice. And it comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes, and it's, it's, it's part of art. Yeah. Every artist kind of goes through it. So how can we, A, I want two questions from this. So how can we get in touch? But before you tell us how we can get in touch, can you tell us what is next for Gingham Dolls and how my listeners can help you achieve that next and how we can get in touch? Okay, so to get in touch at the moment, my website is still being... Under construction. Under construction. I'm, I'm really praying like in a month. Um, to get it up and running, mainly just to get the stuff on the shop. You know, it's all about doing photo shoots and finding time to do this and that. That's that's my main focus that I'm trying to do. I've also, um, but I'm on Facebook, right. so I'm on Facebook. So if you got if you put Gingham Doll, so it's Doll, not Dolls. So, so G I N G H A M mm -hmm. space then D O L L. Okay. Gingham Doll on Facebook, Facebook page. If you like it, then every time I post something it, it just keeps you wherever when the website comes up that's where I will I will post that it's, it's live right. Instagram I do a lot of stuff on Instagram as well I do post a lot of images on, on my Instagram page Same. Um, and it's gingham underscore doll underscore doll okay yeah um, so I'm on there as well so Twitter I am on Twitter gingham underscore doll if I'm being 100% honest I don't go on it as much I tend to I tend to be on Instagram and on Facebook as much because it's just me doing it right. if I had a team of people helping me I could get someone to help me do this, this, this but not that much time in the day so I've kind of just honed in on two areas that I think you know what images is what people like to see let me just start putting that on so I'm on those two sites my website as well is babs at gingham doll.com so that's fairly simple so how are you spelling it b-a-b-s mm -hmm. at gingham doll.com okay so your email that's my email and the second question where I'm my next step is, what I'm working on at the moment is, um, there's an event called Pop-Up Africa. Pop-Up Africa. And that's going to be held in Spitterfield on the 30th of May. Um, I can only say thank you very much no. for blessing it, us with it's your It's so voice. bad because I didn't see your message. Yeah. Till, I don't even know, because I, I didn't even get that message. It was odd, I just happened to, and I was like, what, what did he send me? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. It's all good. Yeah. So, no, I appreciate um, this, this is... Stuff like this just keeps me going. So I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. I can, I can, I can do this because you, if you work alone, you you kind of need this. You you need the reassurance that you're doing something right, or you you kind of every stuff you need to meet up with peers. Even if you don't do fashion, you're still creative. It's it's quite good to get, you know, opinions or or, or be able to speak about what you enjoy. You know, you don't you don't get that. Hey guys, we really appreciate you listening and if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, all the info about the guests, the links and the resources we speak about will be in the description below. And last but not least, please, please, please do get in touch if you can teach us how you do what it is you do. Because after all, Black Ticulate is all about empowering and upskilling the community. Thanks guys, you're the best. See you soon.